newest weapons, the rocket-firing typhoon, known to the RAF as their flying artillery. Every day, these typhoons are over enemy territory, shooting up enemy headquarters, radio location stations, gun positions, observation posts, and other objectives. Hey, welcome to another Heavy Metal Diecast video, and today's bad boy we have here is the Hawker Typhoon, Mark 1B. So this was a British fighter from Hawker Aircraft. Um, it was intended to replace, actually, the Hawker Hurricane, but uh, it didn't quite uh, live up to the replacement standards. <laughs> so it was uh, it was built between 1941 and 45 with around 3,317 aircraft uh, made in all its variants. It was... Um, it was introduced into service in 1941, but it was plagued by a number of issues uh, for its desired role. But it, it did eventually find its niche in that ground attack role. So what we will do is get this bad boy out of its packet. Um, as you can, it's, it's like a D. Augustini um, magazine type one, so it's a very budget conscious one. So we'll get the little blady out and we'll cut, cut this packet open. Let's see if we can get... there we have it so it's a straightforward process it, it was eventually used in the ground attack role which did excel at so it was a, a very good ground attack fighter um, it was eventually armed with bombs and rockets and it had the four um, hispano guns in there and they were quite uh, quite powerful weaponry for the ground attack role so as you can see, it comes in. It comes with all its accessories, like its landing gear, where you can have wheels up, wheels down, the typical kind of uh, standard that you'd come to expect from these type of things. So we'll get it out of its packet and um, have a real good look at this beast. It, it's <laughs> surprisingly, it's got um, a lot of weight. Um, this is quite quite heavy. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a look underneath, and you can see all the markings. It, it does, it has like what they used in D-Day markings as well, but they did put um, markings on this aircraft because apparently they were getting mistaken for Focke Wolf 190s. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of not sure how because the, uh, it is a bit of a different profile, <laughs> but um, people were uh, mistaking this for a Focke Wolf, so the, hence why they started putting these um, identification markings on there before, before actual D-Day did come about. And these markings, as you know, did find their way onto other aircraft for the D-Day um, landings to, to identify them as friendlies, not foes. So, But uh, overall, the build quality of this, I mean, this, this was a $30 budget special. Um, I bought it with a couple of other ones uh, from an overseas seller. And it, the rendition itself is quite nice. So I think it's, uh, you know, it does have a bit of heft in it, which I was quite surprised with the, the weight of it. Um, but the, the details itself, we'll have a look at those finer panel lines there. And um, I think the details themselves are really nice. I'll just try and get some light onto this. doesn't have a pilot figure or anything like that. Um, engine details, it's not a huge amount, but it, it's enough. But what we'll do is we will endeavour to put some landing gear on this. So as you can see here, this is with the landing gear on. We'll have a closer look on there. As I said, I'll, I'll try and do this all off camera so you don't have to uh, put up with that uh, um, the horror of me trying to do that with my sausage fingers. Um, I, th I think the overall sort of quality of the build for the value of it is very reasonable um, for your budget collector. I think it's quite, quite good. So we'll flip her over and uh, have a look. It is quite a, I suppose, a menacing sort of aircraft. It, it's got that big mouth underneath it. Uh, I, I think overall it's, you know, it, it's, it's fairly nice. I think it's uh, a nice rendition of a, a, a Hawker Typhoon. Definitely, for sure. I, I think this is a very nice thing. Um, it does come with a standard stand, which does have some details of the aircraft on there, which is, you know, quite easy to uh, put on. There is no ordnance under that that you need to put on so it's just a straightforward stand deal that you you can you can do and um that is uh that is it that is all assembled ready to display so it's got you know your rockets and it's cannons and then the propeller does spin quite freely um and as i said there is no pilot figure in this bad boy 
It's um, the panel lines are all not, you know pretty reasonable on there. Overall, I I, I think it's not a bad rendition of the uh, Hawker Typhoon Mark One, and I yeah think it's pretty cool. Like value wise, price wise, it's it's not overly expensive, and it presents you know pretty damn well. But once again, that's always my opinion. Um, so yeah, all right. Well, what I'll do, I'm trying to keep these a bit shorter. I will. Uh, chuck up some photos of this without the sausage fingers being in the way and um that way you can check out this bad boy in all its metal glory and uh you know if you can spare that a uh, couple of seconds give us a like that'd be awesome and even subscribe to the channel that'd be great as well all right guys thank you so much for spending the time with me once again and have a great rest of your day cheers guys rocket firing typhoons surely one of the best of all b weapons produced by either side had already done terrific execution They've smashed the Huns' counter-attack.